Hey, hi, Victor. Will we be waiting for more attendees? Uh, hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Just show it by nodding or some. Thank you. Um, um, okay, let's start. Uh, welcome uh, to our webinar, um, Empowering Trees Research, Harnessing AI uh, to Tame Information Overload. I am very glad you could join us today. Uh, we all know that uh, handling uh, the huge amount of information needed for trees uh, projects can be tough. Uh, today, uh, we'll uh, show you how um, size spaces uh, AI tools can make your research much quicker, more effective, and easier. And we have two speakers with us. Uh, first, it's uh, Harsh Vitra. Uh, the technical product manager at uh, SciSpace, uh, Harsh focuses on making the research discovery process smoother. Uh, next is uh, Rohan uh, Tandulkar, uh, who leads uh, the research team at SciSpace. Uh, he has a background in um, nature language processing from IIT Hyderabad. Uh, he has published several papers and he has had experience with firms like uh, JP Morgan Chase. Uh, we're excited, guys, uh, to have you uh, here. So, uh, again, th thanks, everyone, for joining us, and let's get started. Um, Harsh and Rohan, the floor is yours. Uh, Victor, can you give them the access to share a presentation? Uh, I believe you... And you're sharing your screen right now. Okay. Uh, the, the permission has been granted. Thank you. Um, hey, everyone. Um, Harsh from SciSpace. So we'll start with the presentation and let me know if you all can see my screen. Loading. Yep, we can see it. Okay. Uh, Madansa, would you like to, you know, start with the introductions? Yeah, for sure. Okay. Hi, everyone. I hope it's going great for you all, you guys. And I hope you all are excited to dive into the solutions that are here to streamline the process of finding information or digesting the information, basically the whole research process. I am Madalsa, so I work as a content marketer at SciSpace. So today we are going to talk about how SciSpace can solve some of the common problems trace experts face, right? So before we get into the specifics, uh, I'll just give you a quick overview of what SciSpace is. So SciSpace can be defined as the easiest way where you can find, analyze, or understand all the information you guys are looking for, be it a PDF, be it a, be it a book, or be it a research paper, right? So it's all happening at one place where our workspace enables the research community to collaborate. Just a second, it's asking me to confirm my language. Yeah, sorry. So yeah, uh, so now during our conversation with Oleg and Victor, uh, so we identified there were like key problems that might, you guys might face regularly. So the first one uh, was definitely keep up with the latest research, which can be very overwhelming. So there is a lot of constant influx of new research papers and studies, and it's hard to, you know, kind of stay top on of all of it, right? So traditional methods that you guys follow could be time consuming and having access to the most current information is definitely something that's crucial to you all guys, right? And finding all the latest topics. And the second one could be when you are in the middle of a project or you need to quickly refer a specific information, it can be frustrating to shift through a pile of documents and notes. So finding that right piece of data uh, precisely when you need it often 
it could be done easier, much easier, but it's not. So this can actually slow your process and your workflow. So this was the second problem we discovered. And the third was ensuring your references are accurate. And you are getting all those information from the reliable resources that is maintaining the integrity of your work as well. So, and the chat, we found out that chat GPT could not be a reliable resource for all of you guys, right? So that was something we figured out could be solved by SciSpace. Like this is where SciSpace could come in and be your beneficial partner and how it can help you. So now the solution that SciSpace provides is with our research function, we have a search function which can help you access million of papers or information simply by using a keyword or asking a question. So this also ensures that you always have the latest information and the most relevant information of resources at you know, your fingertips. Whenever you search for it, you just get it there. And now it comes to when you find a solution and then managing all of it in one place. So we have a size piece library for that, which is all personal to you. You can share all of your research and your findings in that research library so that it makes it easy for you to track all of your findings. So that's one and our notebook feature is also something that will allow you to take notes and keep track of the resources of all your papers. So even you can use your RAI writer uh, to dwell deeper into the topics and ask them to explain more about the topic, right? You know, extend it a bit. And with our copilot feature, we could definitely dive into our papers. So if information is really really complex you need to understand it you get in you have to get into the intricacies of the papers right and you can ask follow-up questions and that is something our copilot feature does for you and you can understand a lot of information in just minutes and you can also compare all of these information the multiple papers have in just one place you can define your problem statements you can find your potential solutions you know that have already been uh, previously defined and how you can work on it moving forward. And now then finally would be get accurate citations from SciSpace GPT. This is something we can finally solve the problem of the unreliable information you guys are facing through chat GPT, right? With SciSpace GPT, you can get accurate information and citations from your references. If you have a GPT plus, you can easily, you know, get the information, you can easily use our SciSpace GPT and get the citations or the references you need. So these information, all of the solution can help you, you know, overcome the challenges, the repetitive challenges you guys face, which could be time consuming for your research. Or it's like you guys are allowing you to work more efficiently rather than getting stuck into the whole process of the time consuming process of finding, just finding the research papers or the relevant information. So now, uh, giving you the overview of the problem and the solution, I would like to give you a detailed introduction of the platform. So I will introduce Harsh and Rohan to you know take the platform and they'll walk you through it uh, step by step and get to know how you can use the platform for your beneficial. So Harsh, you can please take it forward. Yeah, thank you so much Madalsa for the introduction. So we'll start with the first problem statement of, you know, not being able to find all these resources. So let's go to SciSpace. So you can access uh, SciSpace by visiting the link uh, typeset.io. So here you will see that we have, uh, we have a lot of tools. Okay. The first tool you see here is called literature review. And here you can just ask any simple question which you have. So for example, I will ask a question which I'm researching on right now, which is what are the top uh, strategies what strategies of growing business? Okay, so I'll just ask this question and what will happen in the next few seconds is SciSpace will go through 280 million plus papers to find relevant information for you. So imagine just, you know, being able to go through so much of information in just a matter of few seconds. So this is what, you know, this platform is capable of. Not only that, it has found, you know, top 10 papers for you, you know, with uh, sorted by relevance. Along with that, it has also generated insight from each and every paper. So you don't have to go inside the paper and read. Okay. So you can see that from each and every paper, you have the insight. Now, 
let's say you know you there are some papers which uh, are from 2015 2016 2013 and then some are from 19 1999 what if you want the latest papers okay so SciSpace has ability for you to sort the papers so you can sort by newest first so you could get, get you know all the new papers on the top okay so on this particular topic whichever papers are relevant for your question only those papers will come, not all the latest new papers, only those which are, you know, specific to your questions will come. Here, you can now, after sorting, let's say you only want papers which have PDF. So I can click on this filter and now we will see only those papers which have PDF. Okay. So you see some of the relevant ones which had higher level relevance, but, uh, you know, they did not have PDF. So they were removed from the list. Okay, so this is how you can use uh, literature review to find all these papers. Uh, another very interesting thing which happens in, in the span of five to six seconds is for all those uh, top papers, an insight is generated for you. This insight is directly answering your question which I, you have mentioned here. Okay, and it is also with citations. So for example, if this statement is being answered here, it is coming from one of these papers directly. So you can get this insight directly uh, from the top paper. So you might not even need to go into these papers below. Okay. So you can, let's say, because of this, you understand what you need to search again. So sometimes what happens is we start with a very broader search and then you go deeper into your search field also. So after reading the insight, you can understand that, hey, I just want to focus on, let's say, you know, small businesses. So you could rewrite your search and you know start with a new fresh search so this way you're slowly slowly you narrow down to your specific answer and you get relevant insights for that okay you also see related questions here so these questions are generated which are related to your question and this particular answer so this way you know you can also expand your search so a lot of time this happens is you know when we are thinking linearly we try to go deeper and deeper, but there are some solutions which are non-linear. You have to step out and see things from a different angle. So these related questions will help you, you know, to think from a different angle. So this is uh, mostly about literature review. Uh, there are a lot of other tools you could see, other small features, like if you want insight from top 10 papers, you can just change this. So it will uh, now process all the top 10 papers and give you the insight, okay? After that, you, you could, uh, there are more filters over here. You could change uh, publication type over here. You could change, uh, you could add keywords. For example, if you want certain keywords to be present anyhow in the uh, paper. So you can say uh, like, I want the strategy keyword to be present. Okay. So I'll add the strategy keyword and I'll click on apply and the papers will now be again filtered and only those papers which have strategy keyword will be present. Okay, so this is how uh, you could use, you know, literature review to narrow down your search as well. Now, uh, let's say, you know, if you are doing your research in a different language. Okay, so we have 100 plus languages over here. So you can choose any language you would like and all the content will be changed to that particular language. For example, uh, let's say, you know, if I switch to a language like Hindi. So what happens now is all the answers are convert translated into Hindi. Okay, so this way there is no barrier in language for you to conduct your research. You could use uh, the language switch to understand the papers very clearly. Now, let's say you are finding a uh, lot of interesting papers from here. Okay, and you want to now go deeper into these papers or maybe, you know, you feel like uh, you want to save these papers somewhere and later on, you know, come back to this research. So there is a feature here called bookmark feature. So what you can simply do is click on this feed for, uh, button and then you can click on which folder you want to save this file to. So I will save this file to top business strategies. So let me just save a couple of more files. Okay. So we have saved uh, like four more files. Now I already had this folder in my library for uh, top business strategies and we already had five files over there. Now let me just reload. All the new files should be present now. So now we have 10 files here. 
So all the newly bookmarked ones are also present. Okay, now let's go into library, like what, what's happening here. So library is basically your own Google Drive for Sitespace. Okay, so you can come here, you can upload all your files, all your content here, and then start asking questions. So this way, it makes it very easy for you to collect resources from our literature review platform, which is here, and then take it to library. And then you perform any sort of, you know, other research operations here. So here you can see the first column, it says files. So I have all the files over here. Then there is another column which called types of strategy. Okay. So this is a custom column, which I have created. So what are custom columns? So if you go to the right side, there's an option called as create a column. Okay. So why would you like to create a column? Let's say, you know, you're trying to understand some, some, uh, differentiator between all these papers. Okay. For example, uh, in these papers, there will be a lot of strategies and I want to understand which strategy I can execute the fastest. Okay. What would be the time frame of all these strategies? So I could ask a question over here, like time frame, and then you pass in instruction. So instruction basically helps, uh, us to understand like what you would like to you know extract about so i'll just uh, paste my instruction here okay so i am asking over here for each strategy share how long does it takes to result to see the results from the strategy so let's create this column now since it's going in all the files it will take some time to you know get the information out so you see now i have the results here so this is um, usually any business growth strategy can be seen over a period of several months to a few years. Any customer relationship strategy could uh, start showing within a few months to a year again. Okay. Then financial capital strategy, it stays within a year or two. So you see now I don't have to go inside each and every paper. I'm getting my results outside only without, you know, reading each and every paper. So for me to read each and every paper, it would have taken me several hours to do it. Now I'm getting all these, uh, you know, outputs here only like effectiveness. So which strategy has high effectiveness, which has medium effectiveness. So all of these things you are uh, getting over here only without going deep inside the paper. This reduces the time for research by a huge margin. Okay. So this was all about uh, literature review and a library. Now I will um, ask Rohan to take over for the other topics, sure. which is we'll start with uh, notebooks. Sure. Yeah. Uh, Harsh, let me share the screen. All right. Uh, hey guys. Okay. Looks like we are set. All right, so yeah, thanks for the demo, Harsh. Uh, so we'll take it forward from there. Hope uh, this is already, you know, uh, you're finding this helpful already and we'll try to add more to it. So Harsh showed you how you have a library and how you have various columns. You have a lot of data, right? Now, uh, many times you might feel, okay, it's in my library. I have multiple folders in my library, but for certain topics, when I read certain papers, when I extract certain columns, uh, I want to aggregate the data in one place, right? Uh, because then you can refer maybe one, just one page and you get everything. Uh, so that is where, you know, uh, we have a concept of notebooks, right? So I'll take you through a library that I've created. So I was just uh, researching on a problem called how to solve traffic problems in India, right? So similar to Hush case, I got an answer from top 10 papers. Uh, I also checked papers which had PDFs and here again, uh, this is literature review here also, you can add columns and stuff. So I bookmarked some of the papers uh, and I've added it to my library. So now you are familiar with the literature review to get the initial sources. So literature review, we usually use for that to get the initial set of 10, 20 papers. You can uh, scroll, get, you know, uh, up a lot of papers. So you can keep scrolling. You keep getting more relevant papers and the data for them. So this is the step one. Uh, now we have added some of the papers library, a uh, couple of papers I've added. Now, uh, what we have as a feature here uh, is, just a second, yeah. 
So it's a feature called notebook, right? Now I can go to notebooks on the left. Uh, I'll create a new notebook that uh, how to reduce traffic in India, add it to this collection. So the collection that I created for uh, my traffic problems, okay, just a second. Yeah, okay. Now this is a AI powered notebook. So it does everything that a non AI powered notebook would do, but it also has AI power in it. For example, uh, if you just push tra uh, you know, forward slash, it asks you what all you want to do. You have an AI writer. So I could say, you know, write a problem statement for reducing traffic in India. Now you could write anything. Uh, I am from, I'm currently staying in Bangalore. So traffic is a big concern. So it gives me a problem statement, right? Uh, I can maybe ask it to modify to, you know, specify problem statements only in Bangalore. Uh, but for now, let's accept this, right? Now, I'm in a way starting a report or a literature survey of sorts, right? One of the things we noticed is to solve TRIS problems, we have to research heavily on any problem. I mean, that's the step one. So this becomes my notebook where I accumulate all the data, right? Uh, one, I mean, thing, let's say now I have some papers. So let's, we'll take the notebook off for a while. I have a couple of papers. Now I've added a column similar to what Hirsch did on how to solve traffic problems. Now, what this column is, is basically it's going into these two research papers, getting the answer on how this research paper suggests about traffic congestion problems, right? About how to solve the traffic. So I just click on it. It asks me save to this notebook, or I can select any other notebook. Now, if I add it here, it goes into my notebook, right? Now, along with the link, uh, now that link is the paper from which it came from. So now, if you look at it, this is my problem statement. This is my answer from first paper. Now I can add uh, the second one as well. Uh, that becomes, that starts filling my notebook with all the relevant information that I need. Now I have the answer from second and first, right? Now we also have kind of auto suggestions. So if we keep one day to write report, that also we can keep doing just tab press, just space, it will give you the next suggestion. And you just press tab to accept it. Right, so this becomes a uh, aggregation of sort, right? Uh, if you can ask many other valuable things, let's say you can ask AI to uh, outline builder. So uh, for the topic is let's say uh, solving traffic problems in Bangalore. So Bangalore is what we call it. Will give you an outline. Uh, right now, this is the outline. Revolutionizing transportation, innovative solutions, cracking the code, now it towards and stuff. Like, so this can be like your table of contents of so. Uh, so this also you can accept, reject, and then within each point, you can again use AI to keep writing, or you can add from, you know, your PDFs. So this is a great place to collaborate all the information that you read, you know, because there is a data overload of sorts. You want only the most important ones to be present at a particular point that you can quickly refer and uh, you know use it. Now, if we want to dwell deeper into a paper, now let's say I've compared papers, I've read all the columns. I've realized, okay, this is a paper I want to go more in detail, right? So we can go into it in detail, open it, uh, right? Now we have a co-pilot on the side here. So this co-pilot is like your research assistant. Uh, that will help you answer anything from the paper uh, and pretty much related to the topic. And the important part is, so let's uh, say you want to understand what are the contributions of this paper. Whatever answer it gives, it will try to find citations from within the paper that will answer it, right? So now contributions of this paper is this explores some AI solutions. It also gives current state analysis. It shows predictive traffic modeling, how it can help. Uh, basically, how AI-based traffic modeling can help. It shows how you can optimize public transport, all of the things, and everything as a citation. Now, if you look at this, if I click on any of this, it will take me to that part of the paper from which the answer came from, right? So none of this is a AI-generated, non-cited answer. Everything 
is a cited answer which is coming from some sentences in the paper itself right so this is the you know extremely valuable thing that we have heard from people they love it because what happens in chat gpt or any other platforms is you don't know where the answer came from in the period then you have to search manually so here uh, this builds a trash that the answer came from okay these sentences so yeah it's relevant another thing is okay you found the contributions now there are certain follow-up questions you have we also suggest them so okay how does ai optimize public transportation so that was one of the contributions that we saw it mentioned now let's see how it actually does it uh, in a more elaborate way right so let's wait for the answer here yeah so now this is a very elaborate answer of one of the parts in the previous answer right so now i'm going deeper into each aspect and if you you know click on any of this it will take you to where the answer came from right so it came from this part it came from that part it will try to collect it from entire paper wherever it that topic is talked about so if you look it's a very detailed answer with bullet points now, this is a high quality model that i'm using we have two options of standard and high quality uh, and so it's a very bullet heading wise answer that's and again now interesting part uh, you can save this to the same notebook or any new notebook right so it is added to my notebook directly uh, if you go back to the notebook it will add it be added as a question and answer see if you like this answer you can share it you can give a thumbs up thumbs down that tells us you liked it or you did not like it uh, right so this is the copilot feature now we have certain settings this is more specific to how you want let's say answers you want smaller concise answers or you want detailed answers experience uh, let's say tone you want academic tone or you want you know any specific uh, uh, tone let's say humble formal creative uh, how experienced are you in this field now if you're a beginner it will try to explain it in layman terms if you're an expert it will assume you know few things answer format we currently by default have bullet points whether you want paragraph and custom instructions basically you want anything uh, particular in prompt let's say always define important terms or something like that you can add it here it's basically a free prompt for you uh, right so yeah so this is the key aspect now we have certain more uh, valuable things let's say condition now if you don't understand certain terms you can just highlight it and ask the copilot to explain it so it will explain it in very elaborate detail try to find something from papers as well so let's say what is condition charging how does it work what are the benefits an example now someone who doesn't know this reading this will give him a very good idea of what he's looking at another thing let's say you find something quite big and you don't want to read entirely let's say let's take this paragraph of intelligent traffic management and you want ai to summarize it so a big paragraph it will summarize in a couple of lines right so then you can quickly read papers by summarizing uh, some of the stuff another thing is you can ask for you know find related papers if you like this paper you might want to know more other papers that are similar to this so here again copilot will uh, help you find related papers from the data set, database that we have yeah so let's uh, wait so again yeah all traffic based uh, papers intelligent transportation systems uh, ai based traffic systems and so on Right, so this is Copilot, extremely helpful uh, to dive deep into a paper. Uh, lots of features, again, language uh, that we mentioned is already here. Uh, we have a feature to understand math and explanations, but such kind of topics might not have much of math. Uh, but again, because a lot of people find research math a bit difficult to you know, understand, we have kept that feature. Uh, so we have covered notebooks, we have covered Copilot. Uh, we also have an interesting thing called Chrome plugin, uh, right? So many times people complain, they read stuff online. Uh, they don't, I mean, they might not find everything here because some of the, we have research papers, all of them, but uh, you might read some blogs here and there, but you want SciSpace to help there as well. So that is a requirement we received from a lot of people. And that's when we built Chrome plugin. Now, uh, let's say again, on the same topic, I was reading a blog uh, on, traffic congestion right so again i'm researching reading a lot of blogs and stuff so we have a chrome plugin uh, let me just show you that um, 
So if you go to extensions, search for size space, find the Chrome plugin, right? You can install it from here. I already have it installed. So let's see it in practice. Uh, so yeah, this blog I want to, uh, okay, let me reload it. Yeah, so we have a uh, size space Chrome plugin that kicks in here. Uh, yeah, so it's in a way exactly all the features that we saw in the copilot on the website, you get everything here, right? You can, uh, let's say, what are the main points discussed in this page? Now, this is a big block. You don't want to read it entirely. Uh, you can quickly ask it what is discussing this page. It will give you an answer again with citations. Right, it discussed traffic congestion. It discussed uh, economic environmental costs to resolve it, impact on drivers, benefits of reduction, reducing congestion, uh, and so forth. Now you can ask again follow up questions. You can try to uh, understand again. See here we have. Uh, you want to summarize this paragraph? Let's say we again have a size space. Quickly summarize. It will give a one line summary, a kind of TLDR of sorts. So Chrome plugin, again, extremely valuable. Uh, you have, you can bookmark this again uh, to your library. So it will go to this uh, folder of mine. You can, again, uh, go there, add it to, you know, notebook uh, and everything. You can even copy from here. You can share this answer uh, and stuff. You have all the same settings. Uh, almost everything that you see on the website, you have it here as well, uh, right? So I think, so what we covered is, uh, how you can use notebooks to collect all the data that is, you know, all the notes that are important to you. Uh, you can then use Copilot to understand the paper in very detail, dive deep, uh, understand every concept that is there. Uh, and with citations, that's most important thing for researchers. Uh, you can use Chrome plugin when you're just browsing through any website and still want SciSpace to help out uh, or to, you know, be there, uh, right? You can end add to your library. So your library gets connected to everything you read from website. So yeah, that's kind of the research workspace that we're trying to build. So that you're connected, you are helped by a research assistant throughout your journey and improve your speed drastically. Uh, yeah, I, that's it from my side. I think Harsh can take over and explain uh, the research GPT that we have that will transform your experience in chat GPT. Uh, you can take care from me. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Okay, so now uh, many of you might have used uh, ChatGPT for you know working, and uh, the biggest problem with ChatGPT is it gives answers, but sometimes it makes up its own answers. So let's say for any particular topic, it has collected information from the entire world. What happens now is you know if uh, if there are ten blogs on a certain topic. And five of them have, you know, written just uh, information which is not relevant. ChatGPT will not understand. It will consider all the information as valid source of truth. So it will answer you from all ten of those. So that makes ChatGPT very unreliable for for us. Okay, that's why we have built a uh, research GPT. So you can just visit researchgpt.com and click on try now on ChatGPT. So when you go on, uh, click on this link, you will see this particular page, okay? So this is similar to ChatGPT. It is inside ChatGPT. In fact, <laughs> you can also find it from uh, Explore GPT's option. You will find SciSpace over there. And what you can do is with this, you can interact with our uh, platform inside ChatGPT itself, okay? So we'll take another example here. Uh, I'm going to ask a question, you know, like what is the blue ocean strategy? Okay. So now I'm asking this question to it and what it will do, it will start having a conversation with our information and using our information, it will now create an answer for you. So this answer now is not sourced from any random blog or any, you know, other uh, invalid source of information. It is coming directly from research papers. So this makes it very credible as well. And now the benefit of using this uh, chat GPT interface is you get the power of LLMs, uh, like natural language LLM. 
So I don't have to use, you know, any certain tool. I just have to type anything I want. Okay. So here, see, if you see, it has given me an answer. Okay. It has also given me the sources for those answers and all the papers which are being cited over here. So this way I have like, you know, a surety that any answer which I'm receiving is coming from valid sources. Now, uh, again, we have more, uh, you know, other questions which are being asked on the same topic. So you could use any of these questions and uh, further search, uh, further, you know, expand your search. So this way you can continue in a chat interface all your entire research. Okay. So, so this is uh, what we can do. We can also upload research papers here. So I'm just, uh, I'll just stop this action for now. Okay. We'll upload a research paper here and then we'll try to ask questions from there. Okay. So I'm asking a question. Uh, I'm uploading a research paper and I'm typing a question here. What are the top strategies in this paper? Okay. Now let's send and see. So if, if you feel that, you know, you have some particular article or some particular uh, PDF with you, which you want to analyze, you can also use this to analyze it. So see, it has summarized the entire paper for you. It is giving, uh, you know, all the strategies, which are also grouped by different mechanisms. So customer strategies, financial strategies, internal process strategies, learning and growth strategies. Okay. And then again, detailed table of the top strategies and what are the more, uh, what are the other questions you could ask on top of this? So this is a natural language interface using which, you know, you could, uh, elevate your experience with ChatGPT, and also not worry about any unreliable sources. Okay. So yeah, this was all about, uh, size space from our side. Now we are open to questions. Uh, Madalsa, Rohan, Harsh, thanks so much for your very informative presentation. Um, uh, I will open now the floor for questions, but before we start, I believe I, I, I would like to ask a question which is on the mind of many of our participants. Uh, how expensive is your uh, product and how much slack can you give the Trees community to use it? Hello. Yes. So our uh, product cost is twenty dollars per month. Okay, and uh, uh, the annual cost is around one forty four dollars per year. But for this community, we have you know, like we have a special discount. You can use these coupon codes on our platform and get uh, up to forty percent discount to the annual plan and twenty percent on the monthly plan. So after this call, we can share this presentation and these coupon codes. For everyone to use. Excellent. Thanks so much. Um, now, uh, yeah, or you can take down the coupon codes uh, from the chat. I think Madalsa, can you post it in the chat? Yeah, I can. I can share it with Victor and Oleg as well. If yeah, you want to well, take across, they could do that. Yeah, please, please send it after uh, to me after the uh, webinar. Hour. We'll yeah. we'll share it with the uh, community with uh, our members. Uh, now, if Anyone has a question, please. Uh, uh, actually, it's a ask live them, question. Ask your questions either using the microphone or chat, and uh, I will try to convey them. Can we? Hello. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, it was very impressive how the question on the discounts was automatically generating with AI a slide like that very quickly to show us. Very, very good. Um, that, uh, what I was asking, uh, what I wanted to ask is, what is your data source? Uh, because you talk about 200 something million um, papers. Right. And also how regularly are they updated? So we have like, we started off with the Microsoft Soft Academic Graph as the initial data source. And they stopped uh, updating their sources. So now we have two sources. One is OpenLX. It's a widely known uh, you know, papers repository, research paper repository, and another is Semantic Scholar. So we use those two sources currently. Uh, we are building a pipeline to update it, you know, on a bi-weekly basis currently. 
so let's say currently you might find last one two months paper missing but we are building a pipeline to update it bi-weekly so in coming weeks it should be automatically updated as and when uh, we get updates thank you uh thank you i take uh, open annex and uh google scholar the other question semantic scholar yeah and semantic scholar Semantic scholar. Oh, sorry, yeah, uh, semantic scholar. Yeah, thank you. The other thing I, I was when I saw that you basically made a search from the whole database to a subset, and then with that subset, basically you started to interview uh, the content in there. But you were talking with I think ten to twenty papers there. That subset to actually be able to talk to that, what's the limit of data? Because ten and twenty to twenty, that's actually quite doable. But if if your research area, for example, gives you say a um, result of you know 500 or a thousand papers or 1500 papers would you still be able to interface with that and start asking questions and having the same kind of references so yeah i mean the 10 20 papers we showed in the scroll that you can take it to as much as you want it's an infinite scroll so you can uh, see a list of as many papers as you want uh, until you know we we don't find any more relevant papers for the topic, right? On the top, we gave a top 10 paper insight because if you increase the number of papers, uh, so Harsh, can you open the uh, lit review page first? So, uh, sorry, uh, maybe I, I, I asked my question wrong, sorry. Uh, so yes, I understand that you can actually filter uh, until whatever type of amount of papers, but once you start to make these graphs and these insights, uh, if you have to build insights from say, what are the top trends in say ten thousand papers? I imagine that won't won't work. Uh, so uh, the condition limited. currently, okay. Let's say directly we don't have that yet, mm. uh, but it's a good point. We can uh, think on those lines. Mm. What we can, what we have is, let's say you select all papers, add it to your library. So your library might have those hundred papers or so, and mm. there you can ask questions across all papers. Yeah. So it will try to find across all paper the trends or any results or anything. Uh, in the lit review tools uh, tool as it is, we don't have a that functionality that you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So that means that you have, sorry your last question. So it means we basically took these two hundred million uh, papers and you've trained a model to pre kind of classify the data. So when you question it, it goes quickly. Or do you say it actually every time goes through all the papers to start again from scratch? So it's a combination uh, of multiple approaches that we get the top 10 uh, or just the top. Uh, it's an infinite school. So we get top 500, uh, exactly. but we yeah. use multiple, you know, search techniques uh, to find relevant topics. We use a couple of models. Uh, we collaborate option answers from, I mean, papers from multiple models and then give it back because there is not one model that will always give you the right result. Uh, so yeah, we try course. to get it from multiple models. Uh, because again, there is a domain specific issue and stuff, and you can never guess what the user will ask. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can't pre-classify everything because user can ask uh, anything. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you for the presentation Thank and your you. time. Yeah, I think there was a uh, there was some questions in chat. Okay. Um, we have uh, some other questions uh, in the chat. Uh, let me see. Uh, a question from uh, Tanasak Shankwa. Uh, for the question on the web page typeset.io, in the input field of the question, is the generative AI or is is this generative AI or semantic power? Can you can you repeat it? Is it in chat? Okay, let me uh, copy it to uh, the whole chat. Um, Can you see it now? Yeah. Uh, I hope you understand it. Uh, oh, it's a combination of both. Uh, it's in a way semantic power to get the relevant papers and it's generative AI to generate the insights from those papers. Okay, uh, another question is from uh, Robert Ardunka. Is it possible to generate uh, the citation reference in a format for the uh, literature source section of a paper? Yeah, so I think we have a citation generator tool. Uh, 
Hershey's, I think if you look at the display currently, uh, there you can, you know, generate citations in any format for any uh, material, be it link or be it a paper, anything. You can just paste anything there. Uh, it will generate a citation uh, and it can be APA format, it can be uh, MLA format, any of the format with different versions. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, thank you. Um, anybody else uh, has uh, questions? Harish, can you show the bookmark paper, uh, bookmark uh, feature? Yes. Once? I think yeah. there was a question by Rema uh, mm. El Rashidi. Uh, yes. So uh, if you want PDFs of uh, papers to be present in your library, what you can simply do is click on this bookmark button. Okay. So I'll click on this bookmark button and I'll select the collection where I want it to be stored. And that's all. So it will be stored in my library. I can now go back to my library and reload. And you see this new file is present here. I click on this new file. And now you can start interacting with the copilot. So this is how you can do it. In some cases, you will observe that there is no PDF. So if you bookmark the, those particular uh, sections, what will happen is the paper itself will be present, but there will be no PDF of it. You will be able to ask questions. So let's try this also. You'll be able to ask questions, but those questions will be answered from the abstract of the paper, not the whole paper. So this is what happens when, you know, so in the scientific community, what happens is a lot of papers are closed source. You cannot access them. So that's why we do not allow users to, you know, uh, have the access directly. Only where only abstract can be accessed and you can, you know, ask questions to the abstract. Okay. Um, thank you, Harsh. Now, um, do we have any other questions? We still have uh, 14 more minutes before we uh, are going to wrap up this uh, webinar. Um, Rema L. Rashedi asks, what about the AI detection? Um, I'm not sure. I, I hope you understand this question. So, yeah. Um, so we, we do have a tool called Academic AI Detector where, uh, so there's a common problem in scientific community that people write content generated by AI uh, oh, and submit okay. it as their own, right? Uh, so we tried solving that problem by building an AI detector where uh, we have two options. One is you can put your own text there. Uh, other is you can even upload a PDF and we generate a report of what from the PDF has come from an AI and what is not, uh, right? So you can upload a PDF generated report uh, and then we tell like what sentence is highly likely by AI what sentence is moderately likely by and what sentence is likely a human written sentence. Uh, so this tool uh, is used by a lot of people. Uh, the reason we say it's probably probably written by AI is because uh, day by day AIs are becoming so human that it's not possible to distinguish easily. Uh, that's why it's a likelihood report. Uh, so we ask people to take it, uh, you know, uh, with a uh, you know, pinch of salt because it's likely written by AI. It doesn't mean it's written by AI uh, because the text is very, you know, indistinguishable uh, currently from AI and human. Uh, and we can't easily distinguish text. Yes. Uh, even the model finds it very difficult, the models that we have built here. So we do have these tools uh, as well to help, uh, you know, academicians. Okay. Uh, thank you. Um, I, I have a... Uh... Um, there's a question from uh, Oleg Abramov. Uh, can this system find and analyze patent documents or it's limited to scientific papers only? You just stole my question, Oleg. Thank you. Yeah, we, we can also answer from patent documents. As such, it's uh, you can upload any PDF there. It need not even be patent or research. It can be any you know book that you're reading, ebook or anything. Uh, in the library and you can uh, ask questions on it uh, we have designed it uh, more for research uh, as well uh, yeah so if you look even in literature if you have a 
patent based search and it will give you papers from that side of things so the most of our users are researchers uh, and that's why it's more inclined towards research that's it <laughs> but yeah do try out patents if you find any issues do let us know we'll jump on it okay thank you Thank you. Uh, now I have, uh, it's not a question, it's uh, just a comment. Um, in your, um, the, in the last part of your presentation, when you showed uh, the search for uh, the entry, I believe it was uh, Blue Ocean uh, marketing strategy or something like that. Um, you, uh, the system generated uh, several entries um, and uh, it, it classified them, ranked them by uh, citations. And what uh, struck me is uh, that there were several papers uh, found. One had about 1,500 plus citations, and uh, the others had in maybe in single or double digit citations. So the gap between 1,500 and let's say two or even 12 is huge, as if there is nothing in between. Uh, can you explain this um, strange result? So, Harsh, did we ask it to sort mm. by citations? No, no, we don't sort by citations. The major reason is that one is relevance and second is discovery. So what happens is papers which have, you know, which get good amount of initial traction, uh, if they are always ranked on top, and even if they are not highly relevant to users' questions, they will keep appearing on top. So this is the same uh, algorithm which we are using on our literature review as well. Okay, otherwise what happens is discovery of other papers and other authors is reduced. So we do a fair judgment on the relevance and uh, sort according to that. So in this case, what we can see over here is this paper is appearing, which has high uh, relevance as well, and also citations. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we don't have any bias towards citation count uh, as such, because otherwise new papers won't come up in results. Uh, so that's our philosophy. Until user asks to sort by citations or give only high cited papers, we don't ourselves add that uh, you know restriction. Simon, you oh. have a question. Got yeah. it. Uh, Simon had the question. Uh, Simon, Thank you. so um, two things again. Uh, one, do you use any other data input or output than text? So, can you use, for example, images to actually get some uh, response on those images, or can you get an output in images? Um, and uh, please, if, if that's the first question, yeah, please. So, uh, there are two interfaces where you could what use, uh, like, perform actions on images one is uh, research gpt so if you go to research gpt you have an upload option here yes. and you can upload any sort of uh, images over here and ask questions to it mm -hmm. okay so this is one place second place is if you see the papers and if you see inside your research paper there is an image or a table or something you can use our explain math and table feature and just take a screenshot of it so you take a screenshot of it right now. I don't see any table here, but let's just say, you know, I'll, just to show the feature, I'll just take a screenshot here. Okay. And the screenshot will, you know, directly go in Copilot. And now you can ask other questions on top of it. Okay. So it's saying that the highlighted text uh, doesn't contain tables or equations. So it will just provide an explanation and then comes the explanation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can use uh, these two interfaces to perform image-based uh, analysis. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and Simon, we have uh, second... features coming up which will improve mm -hmm. the interaction on the images. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, stay tuned on those lines. Thank you. And the second question was, uh, is there any way to get in with what you do now, like you're asking for trends and, and so on, but is there any way to track for like small signals in the data? upcoming citizen data, things that are just appearing as emerging uh, technologies or or things that are you know, not like the big trends, but just like the subtle nuanced differences. Within one paper or as a you know search query, 
Can you elaborate? Yeah, you could say I take papers in a certain domain and I'm trying to find, for example, what are the latest new technologies that are coming up in the last so many years that are, you know, being discussed in there. Uh, I think as a part of library, we can do it a bit. Uh, in library, let's say, add a column saying, find what's new in this paper or what are the new trends. Mm -hmm. That's one thing uh, I could suggest. Uh, yeah, other than what Harsh is saying is add a filter of, you know, last one year or two year papers. Uh, mm -hmm. And then add a column here or then ask the question F accordingly. Yeah, but it will uh, be difficult for the papers from the last two years to know that what they are talking yeah. about has not been set in the years before. Um, yeah, but True. yeah, okay, uh, but I see the approach. Thank you. Yeah, we currently don't have it directly as you want it. Yeah. No. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, do we have any more questions? We still have five minutes to before we wrap up this webinar. Okay, I guess we... Maybe, maybe one more, just, I mean, we know we have discounts, but we don't know the price. Uh, okay, so you can see the prices here. Ah, here, okay, okay, sorry, yeah, yeah. thank you. On the pricing page, you'll find the prices. All right, beautiful, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Okay, I would like to thank again uh, our guests uh, from uh, SciSpace. It was, in my view, a very informative, very effective and efficient uh, presentation. I also would like to thank uh, Valerie Sushkov, who is lurking behind uh, this uh, the, the curtain toward, for organizing this uh, uh, webinar. And uh, I would also like to extend my gratitude to Simon DeWolf for asking uh, the most interesting and penetrating questions uh, during this webinar. Uh, the uh, this webinar has been recorded, and uh, it will be the recording will be available soon for everybody to see and share. Thank you, everyone, again, and good luck in everything. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you.